Hello, I'm Sam from Niche Solutions and I'd like to welcome you all to Still Niche, episode three. Today I'm at Beer Gorilla in Northampton, my local bottle shop and bar. In today's video, we'll be hearing from Black & Sun Brewing Company, who have used our Abbey Fermo Ale yeast. It's new to our range, and they've made a Belgian quad. We're gonna hear from Three Hills Brewing Company in collaboration with the Artichoke Pub in Norwich, and they've brewed using our Fermo Lager yeast, and they've made a Keller Lager. And finally, we'll finish off hearing from Phipps NBC here in Northampton, and they've used our Trent Fermo Ale to brew a very traditional stout. Some of you will be watching with one of our tasting boxes. We hope that you enjoy the beers that we've selected for you today. Let's kick things off by talking to Gary from the Black & Sun Brewing Company. Hi, I'm Gary Morse from Black & Sun Brewing Company. Uh, I'm the brewer and owner. We've been operating since September 2017. Uh, initially, uh, really concentrating on hybrid style beers uh, using Belgian yeast, but but in a different sense, i.e. much more hop forward beers, uh, uh, different expressions of, uh, of original Belgian styles. Uh, since then we've progressed a lot more and I've introduced clean yeast and other yeast as well into our brewing cycles. Uh, anything from making a, uh, a big imperial milk stout uh, to a quad down to a 3.6% Saison uh, a very light, low 3.5% Belgian uh, pale ale to uh, West Coast pale ales, West Coast IPAs, double IPAs, uh, triple IPA, uh, and then plans going forward to make some other styles as well, including a, uh, a fruited Hefeweizen. Today we're here to introduce our new beer, Phaser, with the new Abbey Thermo Ale Yeast from Niche Solutions. Uh, I spoke with the guys at Niche Solutions back in uh, November time uh, and heard they had a new, a new yeast coming. Uh, they know uh, the love of, of Belgian yeast here at Black & Sun. Uh, so when they offered me uh, to use some of the yeast for a new beer, uh, I, I, I really had to jump at the chance. And what better than you can do is make a quad. Uh, I think it would give the real essence and flavour of the yeast and if it stood up in such a big beer, um, which it has. Phaser is a 9.5% quad. I used completely English malt. Um, I wanted to, to demonstrate the diversity and quality of English malt um, and, and, and our expression of a quad. Uh, I also used some, some German hops, some Mandarin Bavaria and Halletal Blanc, just for, for simple flavourings, but just to give a nice basis for the, for the malt and especially the yeast to shine. So, Phaser. As you can see, just poured. Uh, on purpose, it's slightly darker than, than some of the quads I've made before. And I don't know if the light you can see this, but it's got, a, up against the light, it's got a lovely ruby color to it. Uh, I think that's from the minimal amount of chocolate malt that I used in there, just to give it a blush in its cheeks. But it's uh, lovely and clear. It's uh, lovely and ruby red. It's a great color. Um, on the nose, it is a combination of Oh, yeah, of, of the Abbey yeast, very fruity and floral, and then some of the more roasted malt, but in a subtle, uh, in the background, uh, I believe, underlining the, the, the aroma of the yeast. And then just a little hop aroma, but very, very minimal. Mm. Mm. So on the taste, oh, it's... Um, Nice, nice sweetness from the malt and a lovely, lovely fruity floral note from the yeast. Um, the, the esters really shine through, uh, really hold up against the darker malts in there and really hold up against the alcohol as well. Um, I would say this because I've made it, but I think that's a really, really nice balanced big beer and uh, I think dangerously drinkable at 9.5%. Uh, brewing next. Not quite sure yet, but the beer I've got in the tank that I recently just brewed is a, a beer which is called Lumiere, which is a, a little collaboration with ourselves and our good friends at Beer Garage. We came up with the idea of a citrus sorbet parallel 
yes I know I know how it sounds uh, a beer which was is 4.6 uh, it has a little bit of lactose milk sugars in there to let it finish slightly residually sweet but not too sweet I use a combination of two dried yeast that I get from niche solutions uh, which create a slightly Belgian maybe a touch of a wit like flavor a little bit of spice and ester from the yeast which just takes the beer to a slightly different level uh, oh that's really really easy it is old school brutal death metal uh, circa 89 to 92 uh, bands are death morbid angel cannibal corpse uh, and the swedish stuff entombed and stuff super brutal metal to brew to just a lot of fun makes the day go quicker that's a great question um I think temperature wise about 10 to 12 degrees I think that would work as it warms up the esters of the yeast come out much more there's a much more flavor to it relaxed kids in bed if you have them or just everything done phones off time to yourself relax um, yeah it, it's it's really really drinkable and I think around about 10 to 12 degrees will just make the the beer shine how it should ah uh, it has to be what is a pirate's favorite subject at school art <laughs> cheers everyone for watching the new beer can be accessed direct from us here at black and sun uh, if you check out our website at blackandsunbrewing.co.uk all the information will be there and our social medias uh, I'd like to thank the guys at Niche uh, for the wonderful yeast. It's uh, a lovely flavour. I'm not just saying this for the video, I will be continuing to use this because uh, I much prefer this yeast from the Abbey yeast I was using previously. So cheers everyone. I hope you get to try the beer. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I think Gary summed up this beer really well when he described it as dangerously drinkable. Let's pass you over to Steve from Three Hills Brewing. He's going to talk to you about their collaboration on the Keller Lager. Hi, my name is Steve Neal. I am the head brewer for Three Hills Brewing. I have been head brewer now for three years. Um, worked for Three Hills for four and a bit years now. Um, and primarily my role is uh, in ensuring that the, the products we make are of good quality, we're using good ingredients, um, and predominantly I'd like to brew uh, juicy, fruity, hoppy IPAs. Uh, so today we're going to take a closer look at our heatings on Keller Lager, which we brewed with our good friends at the Altichoke pub, um, and we brewed it using the niche Fermo Lager yeast strain. We found it to be quite a clean fermenting yeast strain. Um, it worked really well for us. Uh, we had a nice steady fermentation. We started around about 12 degrees C. Um, we held that steady for about a week. And the whole fermentation process uh, was just over five weeks. Primary fermentation was sort of 12 weeks and then we conditioned it out. Um, we found it was low diastole producing and gave us a really clean, nice flavor. So let's get into the beer. So we went for a nice light malt base, 20% uh, carapils, 80% pilsner malt. Um, we felt this would give us a nice clean profile to base our yeast and our hops off of. Got nice clean aromas, low sulfur production. Um, primarily we get uh, the nice kind of woodiness of the perle, but we also get a nice citrusy vibe from also the perle, but also the HPC 431 hops that we used. That's a nice prickly carbonation and uh, is easy drinking, uh, which we're very happy with. So I started as a home brewer um, when I was about 19 years old and I met Andy at a Meet the Brewer event um, at Big Rilla in Northampton. Uh, we got talking about brewing a beer together and uh, here we are now, several years later. <laughs> uh, depends on the mood. Um, either some chill hop or uh, if there's a lot of cleaning, something quite aggressive, you know, some heavy metal. Uh, we've had more time to focus ourselves in the brewery. Um, so we'd taken um, receipt of a new canning machine. Um, so getting to grips with that has been excellent. And also we've managed to set up a lab. Um, so we've been doing some more um, microbiology work, which has been really useful. 
there, there, there's a lot. Um, but I think I would like to tackle some more uh, primary Britannomyces fermentations. Uh, I think we can get some really interesting flavours out of those, and uh, it's always fun to play with some new yeasts. Uh, yeah, probably none for the camera, though. <laughs> uh, we've always got multiple different things going on. Uh, we're continuing to refine our Imperial Stouts. Um, we've got some more mixed fermentation projects going on. Um, we've got another project coming up actually with the new Solutions Fermo Sour, uh, which is going to be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, and some more fruited works as well. Uh, so we can be contacted all over the web. Um, we have our web shop where you can place orders. Um, we're also available on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and particularly for the, the heatings on, um, contact the artichoke. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much, Steve. I hope that all of our viewers can try this beer at some point. On to our third and final beer. Phipps NBC here in Northampton have brewed a very traditional, historic stout. I'll pass you over to Ed for more details. Hello, my name's Ed and I'm a brewer here at Phipps NBC and we're here in the Albion Brewery Bar. Uh, we're here today to talk about Ratliff Stout that we brew using Trent Fermo Ale Yeast. Uh, the Albion Brewery building itself was originally a tower brewery built by Mr. Ratliff and an investor called Mr. Jeffrey. So the story of the beer itself is that uh, it was originally brewed up the hill at a um, malt farm uh, in the Mailhold area of the town. And uh, like I say, Mr. Jeffrey invested in Ratliff's uh, a little while on. The company was bought out by Phipps until uh, the 1960s when it was bought out by Watney's until they eventually shut down all the production of Phipps beers and then it was bought back five or six years ago um, they brought back brewing into this building and uh, we're here today still brewing the same beers uh, we use um, Trent at Fermo it gives us uh, consistent uh, attenuation uh, flocculation is great um, also bottle conditioned and we get a really nice uh, yeast plug at the bottom it settles out really well okay let's have a look see as you can see we get a nice clean pint great condition lovely head And those we've got subtle coffee aromas, and, uh, nice malt and the hops coming through, taste wise. Again, the coffee on the back there, and yeah, nice clean pint. Uh, when I'm brewing, I tend to listen to a lot of hip hop in the morning when I'm mashing in to wake myself up and keep myself uh, energized. Uh, then in the afternoon when I'm running off and pitching the yeast, I tend to listen to Billy Joel. Luckily, um, now that we're coming back out of lockdown, we're uh, back brewing our classic IPA next week. Um, and then on to Gold Star in Midsummer, which is one of our favourite uh, pints to brew this time of year. <laughs> yeah, but not ones I should probably talk about. Uh, we've got, at the side of the building, we've got a slidey door that's uh, our loading bay that's always open in the summer. And uh, on a number of occasions, we've had pigeons flying in and uh, trying to escape, banging their heads through the glass windows that separate the bar and the brewery. Uh, so I walked past a corner shop the other day and noticed one of the letters had fallen down from the sign. So I went into the shop to tell the chap behind the counter and he said, don't worry, I'm on this. If you're interested in finding out more about our beers or ordering, you can visit our website, phipps-nbc.co.uk and obviously post COVID and lockdown, brewery tours are available. And yeah, come visit us and see what we're all about. Thanks for watching, cheers. Thank you, Ed. This stout has the perfect balance between the coffee and the malt flavors with the creamy rounded mouthfeel that you might expect from a lot of modern porters. That concludes our video for today. Thank you very much to Gary, Steve and Ed for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much to Beer Gorilla here in Northampton for letting us film here. And I'll put contact details for all of the breweries in the description below.
If you're watching this and you'd like to be featured in a video after making a great beer with a Niche Solutions product, or you're interested in purchasing any of the yeasts featured today, please contact us, we'd love to hear from you.